All right, kick it off and we'll come through the door. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Here we are live in from around Nashville at Artisan Guitars as the, the roving reporter zooms in. Here he is, Kent Lazy. People, I'm coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee, the volunteer state. Perfect. In the USA Yeah, we've been here It's about crazy times Crazy times Crazy times Please keep in mind We'll get through these crazy times Remember We're all in this together Keep asking what we can do To make it better how we'll get through all these crazy times show some common sense for the common good there's so many things that we can do we can reach out our hands so reach out our hearts we gotta pull together or get pulled apart in these crazy times oh yeah these are crazy By fear, the stronger fear gets to find some joy and happiness. Pet the dog, take a walk, hug your kids while you're off the grid. Learn to cook, read a book, find a quiet place to meditate and pray, pray, pray. Play some music, call a friend, tell the ones you love, or you love them. Again and again Yeah, that's how we'll get through These crazy times Stay safe, stay healthy Stay strong Yeah, and don't believe what you Read on social media it get any better than this what else is possible now how's it get any better than this so we're coming to you like we said from nashville tennessee we're doing some songs off my new record authentic and that one was written um, the day after I got back from a gig in West Palm Beach on March 13th, it got canceled. This year, March 13th, like the, this year, the year that we The whole have world went crazy. That day. That day. When we were trying to get home, they canceled all the NBA and, right. you know, we're canceling all this stuff. And so when I got home, the next day, this song just kind of said, write me. Crazy times, Ken. Crazy times. Wake up, look around. Yeah. Crazy times. And you turn on the news and you're going, what is happening? You know, like out of nowhere. Right. It seemed like. It's happened very few times probably for, I mean, it's, it's strange to say that it gives you lots to write about. Right. And to reflect on and to, to, to witness. You're a witness and you're the storyteller that can tell, you're there to tell the story, but how do you do that in the moment? And that's what came, that was well, the first you one? Know, uh, it's crazy when I look at some of the words that I wrote in here, like so many people have learned to cook right. since then, you know? Uh, <laughs> Like, we do dishes every day now, you know, and it used to be, that's because you're always cooking something right. and, you know, you don't go out of the house or whatever. And then, you know, I also said we got to pull together or get pulled apart, and I'm sorry to say that we pulled so many people apart in this thing, you yeah. know, and it didn't have to be that way. And uh, 
So some of the things I predicted were correct and <laughs> some not so much. So your bingo card, uh, you have some correct some answers correct, on the bingo card, but okay. But, uh, you know, and then social media has just taken over and that's why I had that don't believe in social media and yeah. it's just gotten so much worse since March 13th. So um, I guess I'm, you know, 75%. <laughs> you're good, this is, this is a, that's a good grade. That's much better than a passing grade. So you're, you're, you're doing well. Good. You're doing pretty well. That's, no, that's all right. So this was basically when I thought I've got to get a new record out and I've got to kind of hopefully bring some hope and, you know, joy to some people. Is that what spurred it for you? Were you literally thinking, well, I, I got time now. I, it's, this is smacking me in the face. I got to make a record. Yeah, and the thing of it was, you know, you couldn't co-write unless you Zoomed. Had an internet Zoomed. connection. Yeah, and, uh, and not a lot of people were wanting to write at that time, so I just started basically writing by myself. And, Good. Uh, most of these songs, about three-fourths of them, are stuff that I just wrote in that time period. Cool. Did it, and, and again, it, it, it's, it's somewhat, uh, maybe it's silly to say, but it got your, your energy up. It got the, it really the writing did. juices flowing. You've probably gone, and I assume, I don't know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but over the course of your career, have there been moments of, I write every day and then you know I, I just I'm not inspired at the moment so I'm not doing it as much was this a, a, a this was just much busier period coming out you know cool. and uh, it's just I like having all that time with uh, you know nobody else around to work with or whatever gotcha and so I just sit down every day and see what came up and well good for you for taking advantage of, of a really rough horrible in some people's cases situation so to, for a, with a positive outcome well, that's what I was hoping this would do, you know, bring Good. some, bring some hope to people and and uh, some joy to people. Well, it's, I mean, you can see the smiles on the faces in the room around here right yeah, now. Like it's that. working. Uh, so it the works. record, the record is called Authentic. Authentic, and uh, to m the cover of it is a 1921, uh, 121 Martin, that uh, a friend of mine at at Gruen Guitars who works on my guitars had me buy in Gruen's tent sale. Kay. He said, you need this guitar. Well, it took him three years to repair this guitar. It was in that bad of shape. So it's authentic, you know? It sure is. And so it's on the cover of the record, you know? Perfect. And, uh, it's not mass produced like anything else. You know, I think there were 41 made that year. Okay. And now they make 41 in probably an hour. Oh, so, easily, you know? yeah. So it's a, it's a 100 year old guitar. Right. Did any of these songs come out of that guitar? Yeah. In fact, Perfect. there's a song about that guitar on the record because uh, I love guitars that either have names or like there's this one I bought that had Olive Gale on the headstock where it was this woman that passed away and all these songs came out. But this one had roses painted on her body. Perfect. So she's Rose. Of course. And so I wrote a whole song about her being built and then this guy repairing her and writing a song on it. So when I did that, it was just me and her in the room and I sang it and played it. I love it. Yeah. That, that's, you know, you're, you're just the conduit for the, the song coming through you and exactly. putting it down. Well, I'll shut up. Play some songs. All right, well. Get to work, the two of you. This guy has, uh, some of these will get me emotional, but. Good. <laughs> uh, this guy's been a lifesaver. I met him, um, and we go to Radnor Lake and walk. Yes, sir. And tell everybody, please don't come. <laughs> uh, I had two, two million visitors this year, but. Um, so one day I'm walking with my dogs and he's walking the other way. He goes, you stole my dog. And he acted like he's serious. And I went, what? He says, that's my dog. I was like, well, I've had him since he was a puppy. I don't, that's my dog. I said, okay, he said, I'm teasing you. This looks like my dog Sparky that died. Aww. And uh, so every day we'd see him and you know, you don't know anybody's name out there. You sure. just kind of pass each other. And so, you know, he'd say, where's my dog? And <laughs> it'd be Sparky. And, so then I didn't see him for, uh, I don't know, maybe six months or a year. And, and when I saw him, he looked like hell. And I said, well, what's going on? I said, what'd you say? Wow. My wife's dying of a brain tumor. And I said, my wife died of a brain oh tumor. My so we started talking. I we still didn't know each other's names. We, then I didn't see him for like maybe another six months or a year. And I could tell his wife had died. And so, um, that time I said, well, what's your name? And he said, Steve Allen. And I said, I'm Kent Blasey. I said, what do you do? He says, I'm a guitar player in Nashville. Imagine That's that. strange. And so the I, only one? So I, I, you know, I didn't know anything about him or whatever. And uh, 
So I said, well, why don't you play in my band? Perfect. So he said, okay. Well, I didn't find out till later on that he had been in the pop group 2020 that was huge in the 80s, and he plays with the long players, and he's just one of the most fantastic guitar players. And I feel like we're in sync with each other because we love all the same things, and he lives two blocks from me. So, well, this next song, I had this title uh, that I kind of wanted to run by him, and it was called Coming Back from the Dead. And he said, well, I like that idea, but I really don't think that's a good title for a song. And so what had happened was I had gotten remarried to an incredible woman, and he was uh, falling in love and getting married to another incredible woman. So we kind of wrote this song about our new wives. Perfect. Ready? I'm ready. I want to. crashing down Thought I'd be better off buried six feet in the ground All I could see was black day and night If my heart had stopped beating it would have been alright But thanks to you I'm coming back from the dead yeah, thanks to you, I'm looking up ahead, and I'm going to be all right. I've got a second life, thanks to you. There's a man in the mirror I never thought I would see. Who's that happy stranger smiling back at me? Yeah, there's a spring in my step like I'm bouncing off the ground. The girl that took your love to turn my world around. And thanks to you, I'm coming back from the dead. Yeah, thanks to you. I'm looking up ahead And I'm gonna be alright I've got a second life Thanks to you Austin Coming back from the dead Yeah, thanks to you I'm looking up ahead And I'm gonna be alright I've got a second life Thanks to you You. Yeah, if you find your if you find your musical brother and you, you both share an affinity for the same guitar strap and dogs and music, 
It's a match. It's, it's amazing. He took my dog. He took <laughs> You're never going to let him live it down, are you? Well, I tried to give him to him because it's my wife's dog. Uh, yeah. Well, we won't tell anybody about that except for everyone watching. That was great. Yeah, you guys play. It's so fun to listen to two very similar guitars sound uh, congruent with one another and complementary to one another because they could get lost and they right. don't. Yeah, it's, it's, that's it's really cool. I just, I, I've, I've had like five guitar players in my band in the last 10 years. And yeah. Once he started playing, that was like, it. That's it. The re you lost the this rest of their the phone numbers. Yeah. Well, I mean, you think of you think of great pairings of, of songwriter singers who can also play. I mean, there's a lot of lead singer writers, gu great guitarists, and the best thing they can do for themselves is hire equally or even more impressive instrumentalists around them because it brings everybody's level yeah. up. Yeah. Well, that's what he's you know? done. He's brought the level. My my joy of playing with him brought just everything up. You know. I love that. Yeah. Well, and we love listening to it, too. There you go. This is it. This is the band. There's no room for anyone else. That's right. We got, well, what's funny was that when we recorded this album, my bass player, who's played on every record I've done in the last 10 years and every show I've done in the last 10 years, wouldn't play because of the COVID thing. Yeah. And my drummer, who I knew him before he was born, he was out on the road with L.D. Shane, who's doing a new record on Broken Bow, so they were out doing a radio tour. Gotcha. So I was lucky to get John Party's bass player and drummer, and you were talking about Kevin Murphy oh. on drums. What a, an amazing... There's a Nashville powerhouse. Yeah, and I always like to tell the players, we actually practiced before we went in, which I always like to do, and I said, do you want me to tell you the stories behind the songs first? Said, oh, please, nobody ever tells me the stories Love behind it. the songs. So once he heard the stories, he just played totally different. You mean for the, the song? Yeah, a, he played a for musician the song. who played. He said, I get to play for the song. I don't just play and don't know what I'm playing about. I'm just playing. So there it is. He just really did a great job. And, and Lee Francis is uh, the bass player, and so it, it brought a new energy or, or life to the thing that was different than the other guys. Not better or worse, just totally different. Totally different. Well, and that's you. You you want. If you if if you want to hear what we what we did the last record, go buy the last record. Right. If exactly. you if you've checked that out and you dig what we're doing, we, we here's here's where we went next. Yeah, I mean, this that's, is a lot more rocking of a record than the last couple ones have been, and I think he's a big influence on that. You good. know, and I, I really have always been an electric guitar player. That's my love more than acoustic guitars. But when you move to Nashville and you're doing in the rounds, you start with an acoustic. But finally. The last four or five years, I just started bringing an electric and a little amp, and it adds a whole different flavor to an end around with other acoustic guitars. And you've got your pedal board Velcroed to the guitar itself. Yeah, I mean, that's that's just called. I don't need a tech. I've got my. That's it. I got it right. I've got there. my compressor on, the 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 guitar itself. <laughs> um, so I just made that up. <laughs> hey, mother of invention. That's you know to necessity. do this to a thirty thousand dollar guitar. I don't know why I did it. I, hey, <laughs> you know what? You can buy another one. Yeah, that's right. Maybe two more, whatever. Yeah. Um, let's keep rolling with tunes, if you don't mind. Yeah, so, We'd just uh, love to keep hearing music. This next one, um, you know, Steve and I grew up in, in the 60s, it, but I guess musicians never grow up, but um, we came along in the 60s. And so, you know, I can remember being in grade school and they were talking about the nuclear bombs and, you know, bombs are going to drop in Kennedy and Cuba, and they had us hiding under the desk to be safe from nuclear bombs. Of course. At, at six years old, five years old, I thought, this doesn't make any sense to me. So that was my first kind of thing about, I don't know if I trust the government, you know, at six years old. And so he and I are both big Kennedy assassination, uh, what really happened kind of things, okay. you know. And he, he goes down the rabbit hole way more than me. But yeah. Yeah, but I never believed as a kid that it was Lee Harvey Oswald alone, you know. No. It was impossible. So that's kind of how this song came out and kind of what we're going through right now with uh, so much stuff on TV and, and uh, social media about what's true, what's not, you know. And so this, this is how this came out, and it's called Lies, Lies, Lies. You ready? Cover if the Russians drop the bomb. 
And they said, hide underneath your desk, kids. You'll be free from harm. And they said, Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone. Well, they said there were no shooters up on that grassy knoll. But it's nothing but lies, lies, lies. Don't believe your eyes, lies, lies. They want you to buy. the commies would win the world if they took Vietnam. Yeah, they sent our young boys off to war. The old man didn't give a damn. Now they say what's real is fake now. And what's fake is real. They expect us to keep believing the crap that they sell. But it's nothing but They want you to buy, buy, buy Whatever they say Change lineup change announced. Uh, Graham Nash and uh, David Crosby have been replaced yes. by Kent Blazy and Steve Allen. It'll now be Blazy, Allen, Young, and uh, uh, Stephen Stills. I like it. Yeah, we do too. Okay. That was a good old-fashioned protest song. Exactly. We got ourselves a protest song on the night of the debate. That is that is a okay for us. That was cool. And night of the debate. You're the right. night, sure. Nothing else going on in Nashville tonight, so why wouldn't we have a jam? World Series, baby. Tomorrow night, that's right. Tonight, it know. worked well. We're loving it. Lies, lies, lies. Yeah. I just uh, wish they weren't mutiny. <laughs> hey, 
who knows? They, they, they'll, they'll figure out a way. We know they'll figure out a way. They could mute me, too, if they really wanted to. Well, we don't want that. I know. Well, you're so kind. Um, we, we've got a little bit of time left for one more tune, but I want, you were mentioning to me earlier that you guys are actually playing in town, if anybody's in Nashville on November uh, 10th at the Listening Room, right? Correct. You've played at 6 o'clock. 6 p.m. Now, that's is not your first gig at the Listening Room, huh? Well, you know, the cool thing about the <laughs> listening room is they're really doing the social distancing thing. Nice. All the staff wears masks. You have to wear a mask till you get to your table. The people up on stage are six feet apart. So like they're trying to make it work in these crazy times. That's you know? Hey, and, and that's the only way it's going to continue is if we try to figure out a way to make it work. So I'm glad you're doing that, glad you're playing, and I'm sure you're very glad to be oh, playing, yeah. too. It was so emotional for me when we went into the studio. I just started crying, you there know, you go. to be playing with people again. and. I should have called it Six Masked Men instead of Authentic, you know. That sounds like a Western, but it could still work. Yeah, it would. It may be the next one. You it know, could be know. really good. We'll play oh. us another tune, and we'll, we'll probably have time for one tune, and then we might do some, some extra material afterwards on the YouTube. We can always Yeah. Well, can this one, I, I've written a lot of songs with this kid named Garth Brooks. Now, is he a new, uh, he's not a familiar with the name? He's good for him. Up, in his mind, he's always an up and Bright comer. future for that one, we yeah, hope. I think so. And uh, when I met him, he was cleaning churches and selling boots. Okay. And uh, I had a demo studio, and he wanted to be a demo singer. He thought it would pay better than cleaning churches and selling boots, and he was right. So he brought me over a cassette. Probably you don't remember cassettes, but uh, he played me a couple things, and I said, well, I'll, I'll be glad to use you. And at the time, my demo singers were like Faith Hill, Martina McBride, Joe Diffie, Billy Dean. Hacks. None of these guys could get record deals. You know, and so my favorite singer was Trisha Yearwood. She was, so I ended up introducing them to each other. But uh, when he was leaving that day, he said, well, I'll write a little bit too. And so I said, well, fine, you know, we'll write a song or whatever. So he came over and when I'm writing with people, I always like to have some ideas to run by them and hope the other writer brings some in too. And so he came in and I was sitting on my couch and he's pretty tall, but at the time he was wearing these real long dusters and a big cowboy hat and big cowboy boots and he looked like he was eight feet tall and he said uh i got this idea i've run by 25 writers and nobody likes it i said well gee thanks yeah so uh i said well let me hear it and he played it and i kind of sat there and he said well what's wrong with it and i said well you're killing somebody off in the first couple lines it's like killing the star of the movie off in the first three minutes and he said what would you do and I told him what we do, and we did it, and uh, we wrote this song. We thought it was good. We pitched it around for a year, pitched him around. They said he'll never get a record deal with a name like Garth, and uh, he ended up doing this song at the Bluebird, and it got him a record deal, and it was his first number one. So I'm not going to play that song because I have a brand new song that I wrote with him, and uh, this is the last thing that we kind of wrote. We kind of wrote it for Tricia and my wife, and uh, it's... Uh, it's kind of a different thing. It's not where country music is, but it's where we're at. So, ready? Yeah. I couldn't beat the red light Left me staring at a homeless man Credit cards in my pocket And a sign of the times in his hand Always sat there and wondered why it was me on that side of the door. And then it hit me like thunder. I knew that man from somewhere before. Was he somebody from high school or someone that I knew from the road? Spent a whole morning thinking of every friend of everybody I know On the way home that evening I had his name on the tip of my tongue 3 a.m. I sat straight up in bed When it hit me where I knew him from And that would be me without you Every new day would be nothing new I'd only have lonely to hold on to That would be me without you I 
saw a man on my TV Well, he looked like a regular Joe But his story would lead me Down a path that no good man could go All his family kept asking How could he do such an unthinkable crime My guess is he lost his woman And from there he went out of his mind and That would be me without you Every new day would be nothing new I'd only have lonely to hold on to That would be me without you You know he still brings her flowers As he sits there and talks all alone I've seen him sit there for hours In that garden of stone That would be me without you Every new day would be nothing new I'd only have lonely to hold on to That would be me without you That would be me without you That would be you. That would be you. Oh, man, that gets me every time. <laughs> Good. Well, that should, that's the whole point. If you're feeling it, we yeah. can feel it. And, and the, the beauty is somebody else might see themselves in that song completely differently from how you're describing your experience. And that's how it's it was with If Tomorrow Never Comes. We get so many different letters and cards and people coming up after shows to tell their experience of that. You know? Brilliant. So it's pretty cool. You never have to say anything. You just let them tell their story back to you. Exactly. You've done your part. That's um, fantastic. It, it really is fun to listen to you guys do it on two electrics, too. It's, it's fun to hear the emotion come out of electric when you can lay in and then bring it back. Yeah. We love it. Yeah. Well, this has been a lot of fun. As I mentioned to you earlier, we can keep going on uh, whether this gets in the live program or whether we bring in a little piece okay. for extra Easter eggs at the well, end of the, of the tune. Let's do one more that's uh, hopefully a little inspirational song. Please and, uh, do. I was writing with Garth the day that the Oklahoma bombing took place. Oh my goodness. And he said, his mom called him and said, this broke out windows eight miles away, so he said, I gotta go. So uh, after he left, I was getting together to write with this kid who had really nothing going much at the time called Craig Wiseman. Yeah, another, <laughs> another, <laughs> another went, anyway. went nowhere career for yeah, him. Nowhere. Yeah, nowhere, he's still nowhere. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> so he and I told him about this, and so we ended up writing this song, and uh, it's one of my favorite songs, and you know, with every crazy thing that happens, it takes on a whole nother life of its own, like with this COVID thing. But um, it all kind of started out once again going back to John Kennedy, and you know, I remember as a little kid him saying, "Ask not what your country can do for you, what can you do for your country?" It's like it still sticks with me. Of course, he wasn't putting anybody down, calling anybody names, you know. So. Uh, Daddy still remembers where he was When he heard the news That Kennedy had died It's sad to say that each of us Has those little moments Frozen in time And I was just pulling in the drive When I heard the news today One more tragic time a nation cried And all I could do was close my eyes and pray To give us faith stronger than fear Hope for tomorrow 
when the day is so unclear courage to believe there's a reason why we're here give us faith stronger than fear I worry about the ones I love And I don't know what the answers is But all I ask is that I'm not so scared of dying That I spend my life afraid to live And give us faith stronger than fear Hope for tomorrow when the day is so unclear and courage to believe there's a reason why we're here give us faith stronger than fear for every reason that we find to turn our hearts away let us find one even greater to love one more day and give us faith stronger than fear and hope for tomorrow when the day is so unclear and courage to believe there's a reason why we're here give us faith stronger than fear give us faith stronger than fear daddy still remembers where he was when he heard the news that Camelot had died. Ken Blazy live from Nashville Steve here at Allen Artisan Guitars guitar. with Steve Allen on guitar. You guys want to play us out with a chorus of that one? November 10th, Listening Room in Nashville. The new record is called Authentic. All thank of Ken's you, stuff you. is available online, CD Baby, and everywhere there is music. His music is everywhere there is music. That's a long sentence. There you go. Thank and you like, so much for having here's us. Here's the Artisan. What a thank great you. place, Bill and Ellie. Thank you. Play us thank out. You guys. Thank you guys for being Give here. Give us faith. Thank you for watching. Fear. Hope for tomorrow when the day is so unclear. The courage to believe there's a reason why we're here. Give us faith stronger than fear. Give us faith stronger than fear. Daddy still remembers where he was When he heard the news That Camelot had died